In this video tutorial, we're going to be outlining the process that should be followed in order to design a radial plate cam. And we're going to be designing a cam for a specific function, as outlined in the bottom left hand corner. We've specified that the base circle of our cam should be 60 millimeters, and we can see this represented on our diagram by this diameter here. We're also specifying that the rise and fall should be 25 millimeters, and as we can see here, we have a distance of 5 millimeters between each of our indicating lines there, giving us a total of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 millimeters. And we'll see how these construction lines are used in a moment. We've also specified some angles. We've specified that the rise and fall should both take place over 40 degrees. And we've specified that the top dwell should last 60 degrees. Now once again, we're going to clarify what all of these things mean in a moment. The bottom dwell then is going to be for the remainder of the cycle, noting that a cycle is 360 degrees. We've also been given the rotational speed of our cam of 80 RPM, and we're going to use that rotational speed in order to calculate the time that the cam follower rests in its uppermost position. So at the top of the screen, we have two sections of a diagram. First of all, on the far right hand side of the diagram, we have axes set for an angle displacement diagram. And on the left hand side, we have a template set so that we can sketch the profile of the cam to achieve this specific range of motion. So let's start adding some information to our diagram. The first thing that we've specified is that the rise and the fall are 25 millimeters and should take place within 40 degrees of the rotation. Note here that we've specified that the velocity of the leader should remain constant. So let's add this to our diagram then. We have across 40 degrees of the rotation, and we'll do this for the first part of the rotation. So between zero and 40 degrees, we're rising from a follower position of zero to a follower position of 25 millimeters, or a rise of 25 millimeters. If we refer to our y-axis, we've gone up by 25 millimeters reaching this point here, because as we mentioned earlier, each of our increments were five millimeters, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Now that rise of 25 millimeters for the cam follower has taken place over the first 40 degrees of the revolution. So next, we're told that we want to dwell at the top for 60 degrees. Well, dwelling at the top just means that the follower needs to remain in that uppermost position. So if we were to represent this on the diagram, we need to remain at an elevation of 25 millimeters and we need to remain there for the next 60 degrees of the revolution. So 20, 40, 60, as each of our x-axis increments are 20 degrees. So this brings us up to 100 degrees. Next we're going to fall, and we're going to fall by 25 millimeters once again across 40 degrees of the revolution. So this time, we're traveling downwards, like so. Now you'll note that for the rise and fall here, I've used a straight line. And the reason I've used a straight line is because we specified constant velocity. So as the velocity is constant, the gradient of our angle displacement diagram must remain constant. Okay, so finally we're told we're going to dwell at the bottom for the remainder of the cycle. The remainder of the cycle then is 40 degrees here, but it's also going to be another 180 degrees to represent the other side of the cam. 180 plus 40 is 220. So the dwell position lasts for 220 degrees. The reason we're only representing half of the cam here is because the rest of the cam is just going to be represented by the base circle or the bottom dwell position. Now, when it comes to sketching this cam, what we're looking for is the vertical position of the follower at each of these different angle increments. So we can see then at 20 degrees, our follower is going to be halfway to the top or 12.5 millimeters. Now, when we refer to our diagram over on the left hand side, 
Each of these grid lines here have been added at 20 degrees. So we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, and 180. So at 20 degrees, our follower needs to be at 12 and a half millimeters. Well, 12 and a half millimeters is between 10 and 15 millimeters here. We also know that at an angle of zero, our displacement is zero, and at an angle of 40, our displacement is 25. So sketching the first part of the profile for our cam, we need to add a curve that fits between each of those points. Now we could add additional points for 10 degrees and 30 degrees as an example, but all we're doing here is producing a general sketch of the cam. So we're going to end up with something like this. For the next 60 degrees, we dwell in the top position. Well, if we dwell in the top position, we're going to stay at a displacement of 25 millimeters and our cam needs to represent that. So the profile of the cam is going to sit on the outer circle then for the next 60 degrees, like so. And then we can look at the return phase. So at 120 degrees over here on our diagram, we're at a displacement of 12.5 millimeters again. And at 140 degrees, we're back to zero. So at 140 degrees, back to zero. 120 degrees, 12 and a half millimeters. And once again, we can add that to our cam profile here. So in order to achieve that motion, with a rise and fall of 25 millimeters in 40 degrees at constant velocity, a top dwell of 60 degrees, and a bottom dwell of 220 degrees, our cam profile would need to look like the shaded area here. We have our base circle, and then we have the remaining profile of our cam. So the next question then is if our cam is rotating at 80 revolutions per minute, then how long in each cycle is the cam going to dwell in this top position? Well, first of all, we have 80 RPM, but we want to determine how many revolutions we have every second. So in order to get from RPM to revolutions per second, we need to divide by 60. Well, 80 divided by 60 equals 1.3 recurring revolutions every second or revolutions per second. Now, if we're completing 1.3 revolutions every second, then we can calculate the time per revolution. And the way that we do that is by taking the inverse of our rotational speed there. So one over omega equals our time per revolution. Note that this is going to give our time in seconds as we've specified our speed in revolutions per second. Well, one over 1.3 recurring equals 0.75 seconds. So what we're saying here is that every 0.75 seconds, we're completing one full revolution of our cam. But we're not trying to determine the time for one full revolution of the cam. We're trying to determine the amount of time spent in the top dwell position. Well, we also know that 60 degrees out of a possible 360 degrees is spent in that top dwell position. So as a fraction, 60 over 360 of each revolution is spent in the top dwell position. So if we take that fraction and multiply it by our time per revolution, then that's going to give us the time spent in the top dwell position. So doing that calculation gives us 0.125 seconds or expressed in milliseconds, 125 milliseconds. Let's take a look at another example, except this time we're going to have a different base circle diameter and a different cam follower displacement. And we're also going to specify that the acceleration of the cam follower as it rises and falls is constant rather than the velocity. In this example, we have a base circle diameter of 40 millimeters, which is represented by our circle in the center here. We have a rise and fall of 10 millimeters, which is represented by the distance from here to here. 
on our CAM profile and also on our angle displacement diagram. We've specified that the rise and fall must each take place in 80 degrees at constant acceleration. We've specified that the follower is going to dwell in the top position for 40 degrees and dwell in the bottom position for the remainder of the cycle. And we've also specified our angular speed, this time of 45 RPM. And we're going to look to calculate the amount of time the cam follower spends in the top position each revolution. So the first thing you'll note is that we're rising across 80 degrees and we're also falling across 80 degrees, giving us 160 degrees. And we're dwelling at the top for 40 degrees. Well, 80 plus 40 plus 80 is 200 degrees. So it's no longer appropriate to just produce our angle displacement diagram for 180 degrees. I've needed to extend that to run from 0 to 360 degrees this time. So we're going to be representing the full cycle on that diagram. So first of all then, we rise and fall by 10 millimetres in 80 degrees. Well 80 degrees this time is represented by two of our 40 degree increments. So we're starting at 0 and we're finishing at 80. Now note that previously we used a straight line to connect those two points because we specified that we had constant velocity. Well when we have constant acceleration what we instead see is that the gradient starts very flat, increases and then flattens out again. So we end up with a much gentler change in displacement. We're then dwelling at the top for 40. Now, once again, a dwell of 40 degrees is represented by a straight line because we're remaining at a displacement of 10 millimeters for that 40 degree portion of the rotation. And then we're falling over the next 80 degrees. Now, once again, this is represented by two increments on our angle displacement graph. And once again, we're going to have a steady curve that starts with a negligible gradient increases and then decreases again back to zero and then we've specified that we're going to dwell in the bottom position for the remainder of the cycle so as we're representing 360 degrees this time we can add that to our diagram like so so next we can represent this on our cam profile diagram we know that at zero degrees, we're in the bottom most position, or a displacement of zero. And we know at 80 degrees, we have a displacement of 10 millimetres. Okay, and at 40 degrees, we have a displacement of roughly 5 millimetres. We would expect that to be in the centre as we have constant acceleration and constant deceleration, therefore reaching the midpoint halfway through the segment. So at 40 degrees, we have a displacement of five millimeters. So now we can design the profile for that first section of the can by adding those three points together, giving us something like so. We know that the can then dwells in the top position for 40 degrees or two of our increments, like so. And finally, our follower is going to fall over the next 80 degrees. Well note from our diagram, we only have 20, 40, 60 degrees remaining. So we need to add another segment onto our diagram. This segment needs to be at 20 degrees from the previous segment. You can add this on like so. So our angle there is going to be 200 degrees. We know that at 120 degrees, our cam follower is in the uppermost position, represented by a displacement of 10 millimeters. And we know after a further 80 degrees of rotation, we return to a displacement of zero here. Now we also know that midway through that rotation, or at 40 degrees, we have a displacement of 5 millimetres. The reason being is because the acceleration up to the midpoint and the deceleration from the midpoint to the top position is equal. Acceleration and deceleration are constant. Therefore midway through that segment, our cam follower is going to be at the midpoint. We can finish the profile of our cam by joining these three points together, like so. So the profile of our cam appears as follows. So the cam that we've designed there has a base circle of 40 millimeters, 
We've allowed for a rise and fall of 10 millimetres during 80 degrees worth of rotation. And we've also accommodated for the fact that we wanted constant acceleration during the rise and fall. We've allowed for a top dwell of 40 degrees and the bottom dwell for the remainder of the cycle, which in this case is 160 degrees. So finally, we can determine the amount of time that the cam follower spends in the top dwell position here during 40 degrees. Well, we already know our rotational speed in RPM is 45. Therefore, our rotational speed in revolutions per second is just 45 divided by 60. Well, 45 divided by 60 equals 0 0.75 revolutions per second. Well, if we're completing 0.75 revolutions per second, then the way that we determine the time per revolution is by doing the reciprocal of our rotational speed. Now, because we're doing the reciprocal of our rotational speed in revolutions per second, that's going to give us the time per revolution in seconds which in this case is 1.3 recurring seconds. But no, we don't want the time for one full revolution. We only want the time spent in the top dwell position. Well, we're spending 40 degrees in the top dwell position and a full revolution is 360 degrees. Therefore, as a fraction, 40 over 360 of our time is spent in the top dwell position. Multiplying by our time per revolution, gives us the time spent in that top dwell position. And in this instance, that equals 0 0.1481 seconds, which equates to 148.1 milliseconds. So the cam follower rises to the top position and it remains in the top position for 148.1 milliseconds before returning back to the starting position for the remainder of the revolution.